Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Sophie. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the Group Tree Podcast. On today's show, we have a bit of sport, mysteries and music. But first, we have Jessica and Tegan talking about YouTube. Enjoy. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Jessica. And I'm going to be talking about the videos and the YouTubers I watch on YouTube. Um, who do you watch on YouTube? Um, I watch different YouTubers. Like I, I wouldn't just I wouldn't just watch one, and I also watch different types of videos, um, such as makeup videos and makeup tutorials, um, beauty, fashion, dog vloggers, and dance videos and music videos as well. And um, the YouTubers I watch are Daniela Perkins, Sky Jackson, India Grace, Asbia Williams, Amelia Monet, Kylie Jenner, and I also watch music videos by artists such as Cardi B, Ariana Grande, um, and Gunna. How often do you watch these people? I watch these people almost every day. Um, when did you start watching these people? Some of these people, I started watching them back in 2016, and then some of them, I only started watching them this year, like in the summer this year, so. Um, which person would you say is your favorite? Um, the person I'd say my favorite is probably Daniela Perkins because she's really funny and she does she does different types of videos. She wouldn't just do one; she do vlogs, but she also do like beauty and lots of different types of videos. Who do you like? What? Why do you like watching these people? I like watching these people because they do videos on things I'm interested in, such as beauty, fashion, and they do vlogs and. Next up is Chase on the sideline. Enjoy. Welcome to Sus on the Sideline. My name is Len and I'm joined with Dave and Cole. Today, the three of us will be giving a brief insight on the recent controversies in football. So, the first one I think we should go over is the VAR instance. What do you guys think? Yeah, well, VAR has been, it's been introduced now since the start of the league, and in my opinion, I do think it has been a good decision to bring it in, as most of the instance the referees called have been correct using the VAR. Uh, at the same time, there is a few instances, for example, there over the weekend, uh, the Delhi Ali one, which was a clear handball, and uh, the rest just came in, and the video again, which causes a lot of controversy. But some would say that was a handball. I personally feel that that was a, a shoulder. Uh, it was more to the shoulder than the handball, I'm not too sure now. Uh, the other incident was with uh, Mane. Apparently, Mane. Yeah, well, he did. It was a clear handball. The ref did make the correct decision with the VAR, and yeah, it did, it did lead to it. Still one nil. Fair play until Liverpool got the second goal of Atlanta. Yeah, that that that, that match was a really good match. I think uh, the atmosphere was crazy. You could tell all the fans were uh, excited to be there. I mean, they might have been disappointed from the draw, but I'm sure. They will be excited until the next rivalry between the two teams. One of the best two teams in the top of the league. Yeah, top of the league, one of the best two teams in the world coming against each other. I'm sure be an exciting match for everyone. Yeah, this is one of the good results for United. I think uh, the team they put out was fairly, fairly weak and they were side was strong, so good result for United. Okay, uh, I think um, that was all that we were talking about today, so hope you guys did enjoy this podcast, and tune in next week for Sus on the Sideline for more uh, match, match updates and news. Cheers, thanks. Up next is music news. Enjoy. What's going on in the music industry today? Uh, people are using it for rich and famous lifestyles. And why do you think that? Uh, because they basically don't care how their music is, they just want to be rich and famous. Um, uh, sing, singer uh, always. Um, singer and uh, I. Uh, Francis uh, calls music industries a set says pit of bad behaviour. And why do you think she can suffer? Uh, it's only about sad breakups most of the time. Can you name a, uh, a breakup song? 
Without Me by Halsey. And who did she write that song about? Uh, her ex, G Easy. Jay Z is the highest earning music industry in 2018. Do you know how much he earns? No. <laughs> Too much auto tune and voices don't uh, don't sound the same in concert. Do you personally think that uh, they use a lot of auto tune? Yes, because you can tell by their microphones. Taylor Swift is the highest paid woman in the music industry in 2019. And do you think she deserves to be paid the most, like the highest? Uh, yes. Singers' life are controlled by their producers, so it's not showing the real person they are behind that. Can you explain how you think they're being controlled? by their producers and their um, music producers and like they control their, their dressings, they control their makeup, they control what they sing and everything. So. Next up we have Mysterious Are Us. Enjoy. Well hello there, mysterious ladies and gentle dudes. My name is Charlie. And I'm Jack. And we're about to bestow some crazy mysteries into y'all heads. On today's Mysteries Are Us, we're going to be elucidating y'all about the Malaysia Flight 370 disappearance. Alright, so let's start about the disappearance. This happened on the 8th of March 2014 in Kuala Lumbar International Airport. The Boeing 777-200ER was scheduled to depart to Beijing. 38 minutes after takeoff, the aircraft last communicated with air traffic control over the South China Sea about a channel switch at 5.06 p.m. At 5.22 p.m., the aircraft was lost from civilian radar and communication was lost. The aircraft was still followed by military radar, which showed it doing a complete 180 and flying back over the Andama Sea, doing a 25-degree turn at Georgetown before flying over another 370 kilometers before disappearing completely. The military radar information was not publicly disclosed until four days after the disappearance. Hmm. So what do you think about this, Jack? Like, this friggin' mass turn that this thing's doing, like, 180 degrees, and then, like, another 25% turn? Like, friggin', where was it going? I have no idea. But unofficial, unofficial researchers found 600 runways the plane could have done an emergency landing at if anything was wrong. So the theory of po a possible hijacking was a very popularized theory. It has been reported the aircraft in question had enough fuel to be hijacked and flown to North Korea, which could mean that the US authorized a strike on the plane because maybe they thought it was an unidentified flying object. And there is a theory that the plane was carrying a nuclear warhead and maybe the US did a massive cover-up. Hmm. I guess that's pretty typical of the US. <laughs> <laughs> and also another possible theory was an electronic hijacking. And it could be, it could be possible, but the person would need physical access to the plane's software. And it was not debunked due to the fact that there was a safety ability of uninterrupted control that was stated by Prime Minister Mahathar Mohammed. And a quick theory just to finish ourselves up, which is probably my favourite. Um, it was found by private investigators, uh, by, uh, done after the plane crashed, that both the captain and the co-pilot were having uh, troubles in their marriages. So it's theorized that it's possible that both uh, pilots committed suicide on the plane, and, and possibly an explanation for the turning was a civilian discovering uh, the dead pilots and trying to make an emergency landing but not being able to find land. Exactly, and eventually disappearing. So, I An extra evidence to support this theory <laughs> was that the captain made no social or professional plans after the 8th of March when the plane disappeared. Mm, quite suspicious. Uh, well, that's all, right. all from us, from Mysteries R.S.